Plans to stay. Get your booty on the floor tonight, me. Oh. <laughs> Um, hey, hey, uh, how's it, how's it going? Um, t today we're gonna pump up the jam, so roll it. Make my day, make my day. All right, guys, here's an example of what we're gonna build this week. So as you can see, this is driven by the audio and we are not using anything like trap code sound keys or any of that kind of stuff. It's just all basic default After Effects stuff. So let me show you how to build the basic element for this thing. Okay, I'm gonna turn off this glow and then I have this shape layer right here. Open that up. I have one rectangle and it's repeated 90 degrees. And then there are some expressions on this guy. But first I wanna show you this audio amplitude layer. So you can see we basically have the amplitude for the left channel, the right channel, and it combined both channels. And I made that really quickly using something that you may or may not have seen before. If you take your audio layer and you right click on it, there's keyframe assistant. And if you notice, the only one that's not grayed out is convert audio to keyframes. If you click that, you get this layer. What's nice about things like sound keys is that you can actually define a range of things that you want to have the amplitude for. But what's kind of neat about this is that you can actually put on like a parametric EQ and get a different amplitude. So if I actually go here and make a new amplitude layer, if we open this up, you can see at the same point, my values are different. So by using different audio effects, you can actually control what the amplitude is gonna be. We're gonna dump this for now. Then we go over here and I'm gonna hit the little graph editor button. And then I'm gonna click my left channel slider to show it in the graph editor. And you can see the maximum here is 60 units, which is about where the highest one is over here. So remember that. All of these I believe are actually 60, is the highest. All right, I'm gonna turn the graph editor back off. I'm gonna close this one down and that one down. It's gonna make it a little easier to pick whip this guy. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna dump my expression that I have currently. I'm gonna type in amp equals, I'm gonna pick whip this slider right here. Then I'm gonna do divided by 60, put a semicolon, I'm gonna hit enter so that we get this box thing out of the way. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Then I'm gonna go to a new line and I'm gonna type in X equals amp times 100. Then I'm gonna go down the line, I'm gonna put a bracket X comma value open bracket one close bracket that means the y value semicolon enter so now you see i kind of have an inverted plus from what i had before and i actually don't want it to get that small so the problem is when the amp gets to zero this expression will give me zero for the x and i really want it to be 20 so it's no smaller than the y dimension now you could do this with a linear function but i'm gonna show you how it works behind that so the way we get around that is we're going to add 20 to it of course, that'll give us 120 at the top end. So instead, we're gonna range this out to 80 and add 20 to it. So that brings our range from 20 to 100. So let's do that. We can do amp times 80 plus 20. And there you go. Now you see that we're no smaller than the box. So we're gonna close that up and then we're gonna open up rotation here. And the rotation is the same process, so I'm just gonna show you what's different. So in this case, I pick whip the right channel instead. I'm still dividing it by 60 so that we get a range from zero to one. Then I'm multiplying that by 90 so that our range becomes zero to 90. And then I'm adding 45 degrees because I want this to be a default, an X instead of a plus. So since this range can go actually go from zero to 90, our default will be the X, and then it'll rotate up to 90 degrees to the right, which would still leave us with an X. Obviously, once you have these amplitude amounts, you can tie them to any sort of expression. So you can like go through colors or all sorts of stuff. All right, so let's go back to our main comp. So there's something else a little bit interesting about this comp. And if you've been watching for a while, you might notice that I have a new panel over here. So I took a couple of my scripts that don't have a UI and I built them all into one panel. I still have to do some testing on it, but I'm hoping to release it maybe next week. And if you've bought one of the scripts that's actually in here, you'll probably get a discount code or maybe it'll be free. I'm not really sure how that's going to break down yet, but be on the lookout for that. So anyway, let's delete all of these other elements that I have in here. All the way down to there. Get rid of all of those guys. Now I'm left with one element. Over here, I'm gonna bring it back to the front. This could be anywhere, it doesn't really matter that it's up in the corner. So I could just click here and it'll give me a big array. They're all 100 apart. So that's okay, but that's not what I want. So I'm gonna undo. These all are kind of automatic. They build these grids and rows and all this kind of stuff based on this one spacing value. But this guy's a little bit more complex. 
the X's need to touch. It's just a whole big thing. So what I've worked out is that if I set my spacing to 140 on the X, half of that on the Y, and then I make this 14 rows and 15 columns, and I click my little stagger button right here, it lays out the way I need it. And there's one other script. It's still headless for now, but I have to figure out a way to make it into a panel. And it's called the radial delay. I think it's from like tutorial three, actually. So if we select this element, scroll down and select this one, I have everything selected. I go over to my scripts, radial delay. I'm gonna put 12 frames, so we're like half a second delay. And now everything is arrayed out from the center. So you can see if I click off here, and then we scroll up, it's a little slow. But you can see they're kind of all arranged. Kind of this bell curve kind of deal. And that's because each one of these is in order. The closer it is to center, the closer it is to the actual time that it's supposed to be, and then the others are delayed as they go outward in a circle. Okay, so that brings us back to where we were. I'm not really sure why some of that audio doesn't play real time. Maybe because I'm still screen capping. And if you're curious, I actually made that audio track with an iOS app called Auxy, A-U-X-Y. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to check that out. It's pretty awesome. I might actually sell a pack of tracks later on just because it's fun to do. Anyway, guys, that's it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you feel like helping to support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bum, 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 mm, mm.